Hello gorgeous! Here is how to dress elegantly and comfortably in the sweltering heat. Stay until the very end because you might learn something new and or validate the information you already have is headed in the right direction. Opt for light, breathable materials, namely cotton, linen, silk, and wools. Wools? Why wools? Yeah, you're crazy. There are some wools that are really wide woven that are fantastically breathable, typically in Neapolitan style suits. They're usually without structure and in parts of the UK, it looks very smart. If you want to look polished and put together and you need to wear a jacket, say for example, if you're in an air conditioned office and you work a white collar job nine to five, you want to wear a jacket over your shirt because it's inappropriate to actually wear just your shirt. If it's dead hot, remove your jacket. Do not let anyone stop you. Remove your coat, it's perfectly fine. Don't forget there are also synthetic materials that are man-made, namely tensile and viscose, or any type of blends of these or any of the aforementioned materials. They are also plant-based. I know that tensile and viscose sometimes can be from certain types of trees depending on the variation. It can be a birch tree. They smash the tree, turn it into a pulp along with some other plants to supplement it, and then turn it into a weave. It's really breathable and it's even stretchy and comfortable just like this one. This is tensile. Jersey. And remember that there are also natural materials just as petroleum based, namely polyester, polyamide, acrylic, elastane, bengaline, even rayon nylon. Bengaline is just cotton with rayon or nylon mix, depending on what brand deems it what. These are gonna make you sweaty, and any type of plastic is gonna make you feel clammy. It's a really uncomfortable feeling. I like to stay away from anything too stretchy or too much plastic in it that is elastane, which is essentially polyester, because when you take it out of the dryer or even when you hang it up to dry, it gets really crumbly and scrunches up your ensemble then you have to steam it all over again and add more heat and then the elastane stretchiness is gone so you have to take extra care when it comes to polyester and such delicate materials this is the very first thing i'm mentioning because it's probably one of the most important things and next is your underwear underwear is really important to not have elastane i remember when i was 18 years old i went out and purchased a bunch of victoria's secret underwear it was going to be more of an adult and then they had a lot of plastic in it and i did not feel fresh too much information you can lower down the volume if you want i'm saying this because I want you to be on top of your elegance to feel comfortable, to feel fresh, to look amazing, and to smell amazing without unnecessary sweating. When it comes to your underwear, make sure that it is cotton or something natural that is easy to move in. Cotton is the best. If you're going for the nude seamless underwears that have a little bit more material that is not cotton, then you want to have a panty liner, especially during your time of the month, specifically your ovulatory phase. I'll have a whole video explaining your different times of the month, depending on how many days are in your cycle. So say for example, I don't have a 28 day cycle, Cycle, I have a 35 day cycle. So it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit more complicated to keep on track of. There are apps to help you with that. Ovulatory typically is five days before your luteal phase. Luteal phase is typically a week and a half, sometimes up to two weeks before your menstrual phase. How do you know you're done with your menstrual phase? It's because first off you stop bleeding. You might be spotting a little bit, but then you look in the mirror and your stomach is so spelt. So check out that video after this for even more information on when you release discharge. And that's the time to use panty liners. I have them in my bag, in my car. I have them around the house, in my office. And if not, just go home and change your underwear or bring an extra cotton underwear. That's always easy to do, but just have a little bag that you can separate it from the rest of your things. Also, stick on bras are your friend. If you're wearing a lot of open back items, strapless bras are fabulous, except for the fact that they might have a strap going around the back. I like to use this type of stick on bra. Everything I mentioned will be linked below so that you have some reference to them. And I got this from Amazon. You know, this is <laughs> it's kind of funny to show you my bra, but there are also textile versions. I personally would stay away from them because they don't last as long and find yourself replenishing it and then it'll destroy your budget. If these stop sticking, simply run them under the faucet under soap and water and then they'll start sticking again. It just takes a little bit of practice of putting it on. If you're the type of person who wears camisoles underneath your shirts, make sure that they're also breathable material. I like to wear a silk camisole. I used to wear a lot of cotton ones. I tend to wear them down quite quickly. Hand wash your clothes if you can, especially in the summer because you're going to be constantly washing sweaty things. I'll have a video linked below on how to wash your delicates. I, I know it seems like a lot of work, but once you get into the hang of things, then you'll appreciate your clothes better. It's just something of practice that you get good at, just like anything else. Next is to use protective cuts. What do I mean by this? I like to opt for long hemlines. This even means long sleeves, as long as they are of the materials aforementioned. Why is this? Because you already know how expensive makeup is. This is just a tip if you wear foundation or concealer. It's a pain in the butt to find the right complexion, and especially if your complexion is constantly changing, you're just giving yourself more hassle. I like to opt for midi dresses that are longer because 
it keeps you cool without wearing trousers, but then it also covers your legs so your legs don't have a tan if you're wearing shorts. If you're a person who is not in the mood to put on SPF every single half an hour or so, Super Goop even has an 80 minute roll. You probably are better off having something breathable that you can move around in. I like to wear midi, midaxi, sometimes even maxi dresses in the summer because it's better to just cover up, be free. I still like to wear a long sleeve out in the daytime, especially something cotton or silk because it's lightweight and it covers my shoulders so that I don't get lines on my arms or straps or even on my hands because sometimes you'll wear a watch or some jewelry and then you have a tan. <laughs> also, I want to remember to cover up this. Next is to go into your closet and see what you already have that is cotton and linen and all those light materials because you probably already have some gems in your closet that you're not utilizing. Just check the percentage of the items or you can use blends. If you can't afford a fortune on a wardrobe, that's perfectly okay. You probably have some things that exist. Stick to the simple things. Keep it simple. Don't have to be complicated and you don't have to be super trendy in the summer. Wear classic silhouettes. You want to be comfortable and you can still be chic. If you go into your closet and you find old styles that you don't find yourself wearing, diagnose why you're not wearing it. If you haven't already gotten rid of it, if you have some sewing skills, then sharpen them. I have been going back into my wardrobe looking at old cotton and linen trousers that have been sewing up the waist or hemming the seams because I really want to get the use out of my clothes. I purchased them because I wanted to wear them forever. If I'm not reaching for them, I'm kind of bummed out. I will find a reason to put them in the forefront of my wardrobe so I see them right away and to use them. You can recycle looks and style them differently for the summer. Just use what you have or go out and purchase new styles if that's what you want to do. You can always go to a tailor. You can always ask the tailor for their rates. It's hard finding a good tailor. I moved to a smaller city now. The tailors here are not necessarily my favorite unless they're absolute bespoke tailors who make their own clothes. I guess there's not as much a need for them here and I hate sewing machines. I'd rather do it by hand and it's also more precise for getting everything I want stitched properly. Next is to balance your proportions. This is just a simple style guideline. If you're the kind of person who likes to dress a little bit more conservatively, then you can always use a light bolero jacket with a tie front or a button front. But what I like to do if you don't have a bolero jacket is simply get a white button up shirt, put it over your outfit, kind of like you would with a swimsuit if my arms are showing at all because sometimes I want to button up the shirt so that I don't get tanned here. The reason is I tan so easily. My back and my neck look like a completely different person. Make sure that you balance your proportions when you're showing off your skin because you don't want to show off too much skin. You don't want to look like you're trying to attract attention deliberately at least. If you don't have long sleeves or you don't have mid sleeves or a short sleeve, cover your legs because you'll be more comfortable moving around too and you'll have less wardrobe malfunctions to worry about. Another thing is to avoid skin tight clothes if you can, especially around around the armpits. If you are prone to sweating, you don't want to raise your arms and then it's like a dark shirt has a dark stain. <laughs> what I like to do is wear something sleeveless. Sleeveless is your friend if you're a very sweaty person. Try to not wear pencil skirts in the day that you're going out. I would stick to pencil skirts when I know I'm going to be in a cool area, say if I'm in the office. Funny story, years ago, I got this dress that was skin tight. It was a bodycon. I stood up and there was a butt crack line of sweat. <laughs> so avoid this. There are no bathrooms with mirrors near you. You don't want to this. It's also great to have a woven hat made of paper. That way you can pack it and put it away. There are also packable hats. Just know that there are a lot of chemicals in those stiffer packable hats and they also don't necessarily keep their form. I had several of them and you end up having to steam them and they become a bit high maintenance. If you have a hat that's already packable, that is collapsible, then that's great. The wider the brim, the more it covers your ears and your décolleté and not just your direct line of sight because the sides of your face are cooked and you gotta roast like a rotisserie out in the sun to make sure that it's even. You want to protect your scalp because we might put all the SPF on our body. We could be slathered in sunscreen. But the thing is, our scalp still burns and then it peels. If you dye your hair, it's good to protect your head. And I like to wear a hat as opposed to spraying with SPF spray because in every single brand, every single review, I've done tons of research on SPF. There is some type of allergic reaction people have where there are so many photos of people, a swollen face. You want to avoid that. <laughs> you never know what the odds are, so stick to what you know, stick to what works. Next is to have polarized shades. There's UVA and UVB. UVA is for anti-aging, UVB is for anti-burn, and you also want to get some really high quality shades. I have a pair of Ray-Bans. They're really well-constructed glasses. It's better for your eyesight in the long run, for your eyes in general, to wear something that's actually polarized. I used to buy the cutest shades that were really on trend, but then they didn't have polarization. I was having a hard time seeing, and also with better made glasses, you can see clearly and you don't get a headache. After a while, you realize, oh, that's how the world actually looks. Your eyes are gorgeous. We want to keep them that way. Sunscreen is your absolute friend. There are so many different forms of it. Remember the back of your hands, your shoulders, your neck, your décolletage, toes if you're, you're going out and about. You are wearing sandals that expose your feet. I like to 
follow the rule of cover your toes in the city as much as you can. Put SPF at the top of your feet. I get so annoyed when my feet get unevenly tan. I look like I'm wearing invisible slippers all the time. Bring a mini SPF in your bag. You don't want to get a case of leather pumpkin chest. Skincare is a marathon, not a sprint. You're in it for the long haul. You want to prevent what you can because it's easier to prevent than it is to recover from damage. Next is a trick that I learned from the Middle East. If you wear a scarf that is light or if you're hunting, say for example, my dad used to hunt and he would wear a really light scarf over his head that was really breathable. It covered his head from the sun. If you're sitting out there for hours, actually stay cooler because it's shaded inside this general area and around your neck. You feel like you are being very airy the way you're dressing. Say if you're wearing something that is shapeless or shift and you still want to look like you have a little bit of a curve to your body shape, hourglass shape, make sure that you add a belt. I got this rattan belt from Amazon. You simply stab where you want it to be. Et voila. It makes me look like I have a bit more of a flattering shape. It kind of hides my lumps when you have a baby. You become a flying squirrel with all this extra skin. I'll have this one linked below. There are so many cute designs. Use color. Don't be afraid of wearing color. All the different colors, patterns, textures, brodere of your wardrobe. Another thing is to remember to go easy on the jewelry. One time I was at the sauna and I had my gold hoops in. It got really, really, really hot. I think that I came home and my ears were bleeding. <laughs> so just as a heads up, eventually scabs started to form around my piercings, which was really scary. <laughs> so if you're wearing bangles, if you're wearing necklaces, if you're wearing anything of fine jewelry, fine metals, you want to stay away from wearing too much accessories. Sign up to my newsletter link below for monthly style inspo. You'll get tons of mood boards with classic elegant style inspiration. Follow me on LTK and Instagram at Gia G. Dixon for more style. I hope you enjoyed this. Give this a like, subscribe, and click the bell for more elegant style and high quality living. I kind of have the best audience in the world. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Thank you.